Hello and welcome to part one, Fire Resistance Design Basics of the uh, uh, seminar series on fire resistance design for metal building systems. This is the first part of a five-part series uh, sponsored by the Metal Building Manufacturers Association, otherwise known as MBMA. Uh, I am Nestor Ivankiw, Senior Engineer with Jensen Hughes and uh, have served as the fire protection consultant for MBMA uh, over the last 10 years. A brief disclaimer, uh, while the information presented is as accurate and complete uh, as, uh, as we could uh, develop, uh, please be cautioned that the, it is assumed that the users and applicators of the information are design professionals competent in their field and are responsible for the, the final designs and decisions. As always, the final acceptance and approval of designs is uh, subject to the discretion of the authority having jurisdiction and uh, is always uh, subject to the uh, actually required uh, building codes and standards of a particular jurisdiction. Here are the resources that we will be uh, relying on and referencing during the course of, of this and the other uh, uh, presentations. Uh, the fire protection uh, website page of MBMA is given there. There is also a fire resistance design guide for metal building systems. This is a publication uh, issued in uh, 2010. Here is the cover page uh, of that uh, uh, publication. It's a nice design guide uh, based on the 2009 uh, International Building Code, IBC. The most current version edition of, of the International Building Code is the 2015 uh, version. Um, some of the changes, there are a few that have been made over uh, between 2009-2015 will be uh, mentioned and cited in this, but for the most part, the, uh, the basis of these, this presentation is the 2009 IBC. Most of the U.S. is, uh, uh, is following the IBC. Uh, though the, the, the phasing of the various editions and adoptions of the IBC vary state by state and local jurisdiction by local jurisdiction. So again, uh, please note that uh, whatever version of the IBC or the local building code that is applicable uh, or that uh, is required in your project specification is, is uh, is the requirement and not necessarily uh, the latest IBC. Some basic terms that we will be using in this and, and the remaining series. Active fire protection as opposed to passive fire protection. Active fire protection, as the name implies, requires some uh, mechanical activation or human uh, activation of the um, of the equipment to uh, to perform its function, um, so again, it's not uh, it's not it will not automatically uh, uh, react to a fire, but it needs something uh, to to be uh, activated. In contrast, passive fire protection is part of the construction, if you will, of the building itself. It's there just as the structure and the building finish uh, is in place. So um, it's always there. And uh, as the name implies, um, it's, it's passive. It doesn't need anything to, to activate it to resist the fire. Some examples of this are the fire protection materials that are used for fire resistance, such as gypsum board, spray-on materials, uh, concrete or masonry encasement. 
Another term that's used is uh, thermal barrier, and this is defined in the 2015 IBC Chapter 26 as, uh, in, in, as a default definition, just the half-inch uh, thick uh, gypsum wallboard of any type. Alternatively, uh, some of these uh, spray foam insulation material, materials have uh, conducted and passed uh, other required tests in terms of uh, fire retardant materials or other coverings in lieu of wallboard, uh, and these are, are then uh, acceptable under the code. Uh, as I mentioned, thermal barriers are required in Chapter 26 for many installations of foam plastic insulation within exterior walls and ceilings. Fire resistive rating. That is a prescriptive rating uh, that is determined uh, based on a standard fire test conducted in accordance with the ASTM E119 or the equivalent UL263 standard. There are full-scale test requirements, fire exposure requirements, and then rating or acceptance criteria that are the basis for these ratings. The ratings are expressed in terms of time. Uh, minimum half hour or full hour increments. Um, many of the fire resistance ratings in the codes uh, range from one to three hours, basically. Uh, for metal buildings, the uh, ratings that are of most importance and most commonly uh, applied are, are uh, one and two hour ratings. They usually don't go much higher than that. So what does fire protection do? What are uh, its purposes? First of all, it's, uh, well, the life safety uh, of the occupants uh, and just uh, personnel in general, uh, emergency responders, is, is the uh, utmost importance. And this is done by avoiding collapse, so uh, protecting structural integrity of the building frame. Uh, you want to maintain the integrity of all of the fire barriers and the fire separations. Uh, protect the uh, property uh, to the extent possible, the building contents and the finishes, and that is done by the uh, suppression, control, or containment of the fire uh, to limit the spread to adjacent areas. So all of these uh, uh, goals are the purpose of fire protection. Now the code does this by, first of all, by identifying several occupancy groups and then uh, based on the heights and areas of the building, they, uh, they require, the code requires different fire resistance ratings for those uh, constructions. So the uh, IBC definitions, you have assembly, business, educational, etc high hazard, and you have your abbreviations that the code uses, A for assembly, B for business, M for mercantile. Types of construction. Type 1 and 2 are non-combustible uh, uh, building construction. This is your steel, concrete, and masonry. Non-combustible, as uh, defined by the code, means that it won't ignite and burn. Uh, types 3 and 4 are limited combustible construction, so you, uh, the code allows some uh, form and amount of wood or plastic finishes um, inside the building. Type 5 is any uh, any uh, material for the construction, so it's, it's termed combustible construction. Type 5 construction is the most limited by the code in terms of heights and areas and occupancies just because combustible construction, as the name implies, is the, the most risky and hazardous because the 
building frame by itself will contribute fuel to the fire if, if the fire and the ignition is not controlled. Uh, the non-combustible construction is the most favored by the codes. Uh, again, as, as uh, implied, because the uh, framing material itself uh, will not burn and will not add uh, more fuel to the fire. Now, in terms of metal buildings, uh, because they are uh, steel framed, the framing is non-combustible, clearly. Uh, usually these buildings are one story. Uh, again, because the, the framing is steel and non-combustible, and if the building area is uh, limited, it's not too large, such metal building construction will often qualify for what's called Type 2B construction in the IBC. In other words, in terms of a description, that is non-combustible, unprotected type 2B construction. And it does not, the, the notable feature of that is that uh, for that situation, again, low-rise, single-story buildings, uh, steel, uh, and within limited areas, uh, it, it doesn't have to have any fire resistance rating. Here is the fire resistance table from the IBC. And we highlight here the type 2B construction. And you can see zeros in that column, meaning that there is no fire resistance rating required for any of the building construction elements. Zero rating means you don't require any fire resistance, so unprotected construction is allowable and acceptable. Now in some situations because of um, areas, the, the area limits or the type of occupancy, even single-story metal buildings uh, need to move up to type 2A to the next higher class, if you will, of uh, construction. And there you will see the number one for uh, a lot of the building elements here, including the roof and the primary frame and the columns, etc. Uh, the note here is that for the roof, in the footnote B, you will see that if, except for the higher hazard occupancies, if the roof is more than 20 feet above the ground, the floor level of the building, uh, one can still get exempted to zero rating uh, for that roof. So that is important for type 2A and the other uh, construction that, that you can get that extra allowance uh, from the footnote if you have a, a 20 foot or more clearance from uh, the floor below. Now there are some situations even if the metal building itself qualifies for type 2B unprotected, non-combustible construction, you still may have certain elements within the building that are required to have a fire resistance rating. What are these situations? Well, one that I've mentioned several times is just a larger uh, plan or building area than is allowable by the code. Another one is a higher hazard occupancy. Uh, you may have mixed-use buildings where you need an occupancy separation wall between the, the different uh, occupancies. Uh, in some situations, if you go to uh, more than one story, uh, the, the floors uh, need, need to be fire rated separations. Your exit distances may be longer than allowable by the code and thus you need protected corridors. Uh, and lastly, your building may be uh, squeezed in terms of the adjacent property line, the neighboring building, and there are limits there. If the building is too close to an adjacent building or property line, the exterior walls uh, have to be rated. So let's take a look at uh, separation distance, the last point I made. Um, in terms of the exterior wall and the adjacent property line. 
first of all, the magic distance when, uh, when you don't have to worry about this aspect is 30 feet. So if your building is uh, 30 feet or more from an adjacent property line, uh, this provision uh, is, is not applicable. Now, if you're less than 30 feet, then you have to look here uh, into this table. Depending on the type of construction and the occupancy that you have, uh, you will need, you may need, uh, a rated exterior wall. And the table starts uh, with the riskier or the most the higher uh, fire resistive protection is required for the higher occupant or the higher risk occupancy groups. So you can see for a very, uh, very closely spaced building uh, and let's say an occupancy group of H, uh, high hazard, you will need three hours. Otherwise, for other types of construction, you'll need uh, either two or one hour. And then as your separation distance increases, your, your requirements for fire resistance decrease uh, correspondingly. And you see that arrow. Remember the 30 feet. If you're beyond 30 feet, you don't have to worry about this. If you're less than 30 feet, depending on the occupancy and exactly your separation distance uh, and the type of construction, uh, check this table because you may need either uh, uh, one uh, or three-hour rating. In some cases, you may still be exempted uh, for the lower uh, risk occupancies. And that concludes uh, part one of this five-part series. Thank you for your attention.